start. I'm Andrea Gallo from ST Ericsson. Um, in ST Ericsson, I have a role of um, influencing the open source activities around our internal Linux development. And I also sit in the Vinaro technical board. Um, I will be talking about the uh, importance of uh, the ARM kernel consolidation activities and uh, uh, how these uh, helps our, our customers. I will first um, introduce for just a couple of minutes our company. I will summarize the activities ongoing in Linaro and I will describe the kernel consolidation work. I would like to thank all people who helped me build this presentation in alphabetical order. Alessandro Rubini, author of the Linux Device Drivers book, David Brasling, CTO of Linaro, and uh, our own Linus Wale, uh, coordinator of our uh, upstreaming activity. Of course, all mistakes are mine. Um, we have had a uh, last minute issue with the uh, corporate Windows PC, so we have moved to uh, Linux One, and of course, Microsoft is not happy when uh, you open the slides in, uh, in Linux. So I apologize for some formatting, but uh, online on the website you should have the, the PDF with the right uh, formatting. ST Ericsson is a joint venture between ST Microelectronics and Ericsson Mobile, and uh, we are just uh, three years old. Um, but um, uh, one in three mobile phones in 2010 is powered by ST Ericsson C. Uh, we have a very uh, simple uh, product line, product portfolio. On one side, we have application processors, so we try to always have the best, the most performing application processors. This is the Nova uh, product line. And on the other side, we uh, have modems and we try and have always the most performing modems. And then very simply, we optimize and combine them in one single silicon. And this is the Nova Tor, where we uh, optimize for performance and for cost reduction. Uh, you can find our silicon in uh, uh, modems, thin modems and a USB modem for, uh, for laptops. Uh, you can find our products in tablets and in uh, smartphones on the market. On the Nova side, on the application processor side, uh, we move from uh, dual Cortex A9 at 1 gigahertz. We improve changing the silicon process and then changing the ARM architecture moving to the A15. On the modem side, we are leaders in the TD, CSTDMA in China. We are the first and uh, the uh, fastest 21 megabit HSPA modem for smartphones. And our LTE solution is uh, the best multi-mode and is already verified and approved by the customer. Enough for the advertising <laughs> and introduction of OBS Ericsson. Um, I hope I've been shorter than the five minutes I anticipated. Let's move to Linaro, which is my second uh, hat at work. Linaro was founded in uh, June 2010 by uh, six founding members. The mission for Linaro is to reduce the time to market for all customers wanting to develop new products based on the ARM architecture and based on the Linux software. Linaro achieved this by always delivering uh, the most advanced uh, kernel and tools, always tested and optimized on the latest ARM architectures, and always tested and validated on the hardware by the members. Linaro sits in between the silicon vendors, the communities, and the uh, framework providers. Uh, before uh, Linaro, uh, all us as silicon members, uh, we were producing a uh, significant amount of uh, patches, pushing them upstream directly to the ARM community, to Russell King, to Linus. And uh, guess what? <laughs> the patches were duplicating the work. Uh, it was the same patches by, by different companies. And uh, even worse, our patches sometimes were conflicting. and, and uh, just creating pain for 
for the arm maintainers. Linari is sitting in the middle now, is coordinating all these patch generation, is making sure that there is no duplication of the patches, is making sure that the patches are cleaned and pre-tested on the hardware, and making sure that they are also pre-tested on the latest Linux. So when it, these patches reach uh, the ARM maintainers, the work for them is easier, there are less conflicts, less duplication. Um, Linaro is also introducing a significant amount of innovation in the work we are doing and we are pre-validating this in uh, the uh, major distributions to make sure that our work not only fits in the kernel but works nicely with the uh, most, uh, most used distributions. Again, all this is to reduce time to market and to accelerate the innovation by customers. Uh, very quickly, Linaro has ramped up to the top 20 in uh, contributors, uh, and I'm sure this uh, can only improve in time. Some results so far. Um, in the last three months, we have delivered more than 1,000 patches, from kernel to upstream to, to some middleware like the libjpeg turbo or QMU. Um, we are uh, leading now initiatives in the ARM uh, community in uh, uh, aligning and consolidating the kernel, in uh, unifying the uh, memory allocation uh, strategy. We have implemented device tree for the first time for the ARM SOX. We are delivering the best GCC toolchain on ARM. We have established an upstream uh, process to synchronize all the patches. And again, all this is um, executed in a continuous integration with automatic testing. And all this is delivered pre-validated also in Android and Ubuntu. Uh, if you are interested in uh, more details, uh, I invite you to attend the keynote session right after lunch by Arne Berkman. The starting point for uh, the topic of my speech is what happened last March when there was a big crisis in the ARM architecture and in the ARM community. This is when uh, Linus Torvald complained very directly, very harshly about the mess that we were in. Um, I have not copy pasted here his message, but I guess you know it, it's clear enough. Uh, Linus complained by the lack of coordination in the ARM community. Uh, he complained because the ARM architecture is showing unlimited growth. There's a huge duplication. There's a mess everywhere. Um, if you look at this chart, courtesy of Linaro, well, you see that if you take uh, the, the, the kernel, a given kernel release as of uh, last March, the ARM architecture is taking 70% of the space in terms of code lines. So I guess Linux is right. It's not only one snapshot at a given point of time as of last, last March, but uh, and we have a problem with PowerPoint. <laughs> to PDF. Yes, I have it. Thanks to Windows. <laughs> yes, I'm trying to stop it. I'm glad to showing this chart because I was about to prepare the same one for my talk later. <laughs> <laughs> so I can use the, the, the blank chart so that <laughs> people will come to yours. Yes. 
here it is. Look at the trend. It's not only the snapshot in a given point of time, it's the trend. And I've only gone back to 2.6.36. Uh, I could have gone back farther in time, and uh, you would see the same trend. Unlimited growth and a duplication. So last March, uh, right after the, the big complaint by, by Linus, Linaro uh, volunteered to step in and help. Uh, actually, we recognized that it, it, it was part of our mission as consolidating the, the arm work, improving the arm Linux work to drive this. So Linaro has proposed to set up a maintenance group for the ARM sub-architecture. And uh, uh, we are glad that we have people like Arne Bertman, thanks for helping me all this, and also Nicolas Beat, Mark Zick, Zinger, and uh, also great help from Thomas Glaxner. And uh, this is in full uh, synchronization with Russell King. So all this team is uh, reviewing, consolidating, cleaning up all the uh, sub-architectures in the, in, the, uh, in the ARC arm, uh, trying to improve the situation. Please note that this activity is not limited to Linaro members. We are doing cleanup also for ARM architectures who are not in Linaro. And please note that this work is not mandatory. For <laughs> well, it's by, by, by practice, but companies outside uh, Linaro, for whichever reason, they may decide not to be part of this cleanup. Uh, but we recommend. Uh, there are uh, several areas where we need to do cleanup. Uh, as I was saying, there is a lot of uh, duplicated code for drivers uh, for the same IPs or for IPs which are very similar. We have multiple drivers. On infrastructure, it's the same. Uh, Marek from Samsung yesterday was describing his CMA work and how uh, this work is now becoming the standard in the memory management and it is endorsed by Linaro. So this is the perfect example. He mentioned that at the beginning there were many different frameworks for memory allocation. PMEM, our own in ST Ericsson hardware mem, the CMA, everybody was always reinventing the same. And uh, it's there, it's part of that 70% of ARM versus the rest of the kernel. In some other cases, there is, a no, there is a lack of infrastructure. And then every ARM vendor is, is creating their own infrastructure. And thermal, the thermal framework power management is an example where Linaro is now deploying a, a common thermal framework. Uh, please note that uh, a great value in the ARM community is diversification, is being different is competing for innovation. And Linaro is not killing this. On the contrary, we are fostering this. We are standardizing the frameworks so that the common code on top of the frameworks works without changes, while below the frameworks, each SOC, SOC vendor can compete. ST Ericsson is competing with the others on who is the best, consuming less, or being the most performant. In, in, the comp in the area where the competition shall be, where we can differentiate. But wherever it's common code, w we are uh, sharing this. Um, there is also a lot of code in the wrong place. Uh, many drivers for common peripherals are in the uh, arc ARM machine or platform instead of being in the driver's side. So all this needs to be cleaned up and uh, the target would be that each machine is a single compiled target. For example, in our case for ST Ericsson, we would like that our UX500 uh, machine works for the 8500, the 9500, the 5500, and the other socks we are working on. Let me skip this. So uh, let's go back to the uh, trend. And uh, you see here that the orange line up to last March is what I have shown a few minutes ago. 
the black line is uh, the interpolation if that trend continues but after March in synchronization with the 3.0 work you see that there is a significant cleanup that is already happening if you look at this the actual status on 3.0 and uh, the 3.1 master branch is about 100,000 lines less than what would have been and 100,000 lines is 40% uh, of the x86 size it's, it's huge uh, and we are adding so uh, here I'm not uh, saying that all this is uh, thanks to Linaro uh, but it's overall the message is that we see that after the, the, the strong complaint by Linus the ARM community is, is, is improving, is pay, making attention most importantly uh, look at the rate of insertions and you will see that the number of lines added in each release has reduced, has dropped dramatically and now it's closer to the average on the x86 while uh, in uh, 2.0 6 of 37 or 38 we were adding 70,000 lines one release versus the previous now we are closer to the trend of uh, 10 to 20,000 which is the average also on the x86 side and on the deletion this is even more impressive we see that 50,000 lines deleted when moving to 3.0 there's a significant cleanup ongoing um, I have then tried uh, to move inside the, uh, sub the ARM sub-architectures. So I have used uh, this script. Uh, you can get it from the slides uh, online. It's just for reference, uh, just so that you can check and, and eventually offline let me know if there's any mistake. We have just tried to compute the lines uh, in the ARM sub-architectures. And uh, this is what we, what we see. Um, there are some uh, very successful companies which are between 60,000 and uh, 140,000 lines of, of code. Uh, some others are equally successful and are below 20,000. Um, I'm being very... Um, I'm, I'm not commenting, uh, I'm just analyzing numbers. Uh, please uh, understand that I'm not uh, expressing any, any opinion as ST Ericsson compared to the others. This is just the situation and I'm explaining why kernel consolidation is important to improve all this. Um, if we look into the uh, arc ARM machine or ARM platform, you will see that in some cases there are more than 35 uh, board files because of course those architectures are extremely successful and whenever you have a new board, uh, well today you need a new patch set for a new board. Uh, you have even 25 clock files to describe the complexity of the clock subsystems and uh, complexity also means value because the ARM socks uh, have so many power saving uh, modes. But we need to clean up this. Uh, if you look at the machines or the platforms, you will see that some of these contain SPI drivers or DMA drivers. Why are they in the platform folder? Why can't we move the SPI in the uh, driver's SPI folder or driver's DMA folder? This is what part of the work that we shall, we shall do. Uh, then if I look specifically for ST Ericsson, uh, we started some four or five years ago. Uh, we have been continuously growing. We are very small. Uh, as I said in the previous slide, you see some very successful companies at 60,000 or 140,000. In our case, we are at the 20,000. But we are very proud of this because since the beginning, we have worked in uh, reusing existing drivers we have uh, tried to avoid uh, duplication. So today our 20,000 lines in our uh, sub-architecture 
cover three families, the legacy Ericsson mobile U300, the ST Microelectronics Nomadic Legacy, and our dual Cortex A9 family uh, with 8500, 5500, 9500, and others coming as, as you have seen from my roadmap slide. And uh, the same uh, uh, folder, the same 20,000 lines, include also five different reference designs. Uh, I will not go through the names, but you have them. These are five different reference designs for different system on chips uh, used in products, in products in mass production. Some examples. Uh, since the beginning, uh, four years ago, when we started upstreaming our uh, interrupt controller, uh, we had uh, twice the number of interrupt sources in the VIC. Uh, the temptation was just too easy to create a new VIC driver. And uh, I guess that maybe somewhere in the archives, back in four or five years ago, we may have actually a duplicated driver. But when we upstreamed it, we actually just added our vendor ID in the initialization. And that was enough to completely reuse the VIC as is. And if you go in the VIC.c file, you will actually see the code I'm referring to. Um, similarly, if you look at the uh, SPI for the, uh, the AMBA uh, prime cell, or if you look at the UART AMBA, the PL011, or the uh, MMCI, you will see that there is significant contribution uh, by ST Microelectronics or ST Ericsson. Uh, some of the code uh, is uh, um, ancestry of our previous nomadic. Uh, something is something that we have contributed recently. Um, an example is the, the AMBA, the PL011. This is a UART. Very simple, it's a commodity. Uh, well, we, we increase the FIFO and we changed the threshold for the interrupts so that the interrupt rate would be uh, lower uh, and our, our platform would have less CPU load due to interrupts on the UART. Very simple. And uh, yes, uh, one of our engineers in Bangalore initially duplicated the driver. And uh, when we uh, decided to upstream and we reviewed all the code, uh, well, Russell King was very, very gentle in uh, highlighting that that was not the right way. And uh, you can find, again, uh, the vendor ID in the UART, in the standard UART upstream, and you will see that with just a simple if statement, uh, we can reuse the standard driver. Uh, go uh, to the MMCI and you will see significant contribution uh, by Ericsson, even recently uh, you should see more patches already this week where we are trying to uh, improve on the on the buffer size and the DMA when using the, uh, the MMC. And it's good that some of these patches are and drivers are being reused also by our parent company, SD Microelectronics. Some are used on the ARM platforms. I have also seen that uh, one of these drivers is used also by one NXP platform. Uh, I have not asked permission to NXP to mention them in this slide. If there is anybody from NXP who, who is not happy, I will remove it. I apologize in case. Um, another interesting example is uh, the um, port expander, STMP. STMP is a very simple, stupid, but very useful chip. It connects on the I2C bus to the, uh, to the ARM subsystem and it provides a significant number of GPIOs. Uh, in an embedded system, you never have enough GPIOs. And, um, well, you never have enough pins on your package on the board, so you're always short of uh, GPIO lines. And this port expander connects to the I2C and provides 32 or 64, whatever, new uh, GPIO lines. And some of them can generate interrupts, and on some of them you can con connect a keyboard and you have an automatic uh, keyboard controller in the chip. Uh, then you need to integrate this. And uh, yes, it's true. Initially we started adding I2C uh, read and write operations in a touchscreen controller, which was not by ST Ericsson. It was by another vendor. 
or we uh, deve de developed, uh, we modified the, the Ethernet controller just to, to use our I2C and we were duplicating code. Then we cleaned up everything and we uh, wrote um, a multifunction driver which takes care of, of the, all the I2C and the registers to configure the GPIO lines. And we have exposed this as a standard GPIO driver and as a standard keyboard. So what happens now is that uh, the Ethernet, the SMSC uh, 911 that we are using, or uh, any other touchscreen controller which is using uh, the GPIO Thanks. Yes. Uh, now the, the it's uh, a Ethernet um, touchscreen controller. They're just using the GPIO driver, and this is working uh, seamlessly. No need to patch these codes to use our uh, port expander. So these are simple examples of of how you can avoid duplicating code in your uh, sub architecture. Uh, we are also, uh, within the Linaro work, uh, we are also uh, helping clean up other platforms. For example, our own Linux Valet is cleaning the, the global uh, GPIO subsystem, not only for our Nomadic U300, our UX500, but also other machines, even from our uh, competitors, you see the names, even for the very old strong arm, the, the SA1100. Uh, uh, Linus within uh, Linaro is also working on device three and on the on the uh, pin max and pin control framework. Um, another example is uh, a few months back. Uh, well, of course we have our own hardware semaphore, and of course we had our own custom driver. And uh, a few months back, uh, Mathieu uh, Poiré in within the Linaro activity uh, for our snowball. Uh, cleaned up these, and uh, we align to the standard uh, hardware spin lock driver now. So we are within 20,000 lines in our sub-architecture, uh, but we are proud of it because all our drivers are actually, the drivers that we use are actually outside. So the 20,000 lines is, is really what is needed, what is our uh, differentiating factor, and not duplicated code. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that there's a lot uh, or work more that we need to do and uh, we need to improve even further. So all this consolidation work is, uh, is important, uh, is valuable. Uh, how does this help and benefit our customers? Um, last February we introduced uh, the Snowball and the Igloo community. Um, the Snowball is a low-cost development board. <coughs> and we launched also a website to support the uh, developers using this board. The Snowball is based on our uh, Nova A95 uh, 9500 application processor. It's a dual-core Cortex-A9 at 1.2 GHz. It includes a uh, GPU, the ARM Mali GPU. It includes our own video accelerator, which reaches a full HD 1080p uh, in full hardware acceleration. Uh, we also have HD camcorder. We support up to 20 megapixel cameras. Um, we have very nice augmented reality uh, demos running. Uh, on the board, you can find all sorts of local connectivity, GPS, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, HDMI, uh, all sort of uh, MEMS, uh, the, the usual accelerometers, but also magnetometers, gyro, and even pressure sensor in case you, you want to develop a weather station. The board comes in two flavors. There is an SDK and a PDK. Uh, SDK for software development, uh, and the target price is $200, uh, 150 euros more or less, and the PDK is 300. There are some differences mainly in the uh, flash uh, storage, but actually we managed to uh, lower the price on the software development kit because we removed all the expensive, very expensive um, high density connectors 
uh, which, can, which you can use to add your own custom boards. Uh, this is also interesting on the other side for the PDK. The PDK uh, has all the expansion ports where you can design your own custom board, your own interface board for your own product. Most importantly, the PDK ha comes with all the legal framework and the liability so that the PDK can be used directly in an end product. This means that uh, small companies who are prototyping a new product can use the PDK directly, can plug their own interface board, their own mechanical design around it for small volumes, for products which are in uh, high margin, uh, low volumes in niche markets, not consumer electronics, of course. Mm -hmm. But there are many companies, small companies, who make a valuable business in high margin uh, niche areas. They can use the PDK directly in their end product. So we are removing the entry barrier in designing the PCB. Calao, Calao Systems is the company uh, who autonomously designed the Snowball. And the, uh, of course their business is uh, to successfully sell Snowball and to uh, provide hardware design services to all customers. On the software side, on the Igloo community, Movial is providing all the support and all uh, uh, customers buying a Snowball can have free online support uh, through the Igloo community website and uh, even if you don't have a Snowball yet, I invite you to join the Igloo chat uh, where there are discussions uh, among the developers. Mm -hmm. And of course Movial will, will be uh, available to provide professional services uh, on top of the free online support. The point here is that we have the Snowball, we have our internal hardware that we are uh, using with our uh, Tier 1 customers, and, and then the Snowball and our internal reference board, they go in a plethora of uh, different products. These are uh, smartphones, tablets, but who knows? You can, you can then find the Snowball in a home automation or in a machine to machine or in a weather station or whatever. So the point here is that these are going to uh, increase the dramatically, but we want to stay and remain at the 20,000 lines of code range in our sub-architecture. So it's, 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 uh, it's just so mandatory that we reuse code. We maximize the code reuse across, across all our boards and, and chipsets. We need to avoid new patch sets for every new board. So the same code shall run on all our platforms. And this is why the uh, kernel consolidation uh, being done in uh, Linaro and the introduction of device tree is uh, so invaluable to us, so invaluable to all our customers. If I uh, summarize, by introducing the Snowball, which is production grade, uh, ready for uh, end products, by uh, leveraging on the Linaro work, by reusing the Linaro kernel, all the Linaro innovation, pre-tested and pre-integrated in Android and Ubuntu, and by providing support uh, through Igloo community, we are removing the entry barriers. So it is mandatory that we remove the entry barriers, we help our customers focus immediately in developing their products, and it's mandatory that the code stays clean and does not explode. So please work with us in uh, improving this kernel consolidation. Uh, help us achieve a full device tree support and join us in all the Linaro activities and visit us on the Igloo community. Thank you. I have left uh, enough time for uh, questions and for an extra coffee break before the next session, which is uh, in some uh, 15 minutes. Yes, please.
Thank you very much. I, I was planning to add one slide on this, then I thought that uh, it would have caused confusion. Uh, I repeat the question, yes. Um, when we announced uh, the Igloo community months ago, we also announced the full uh, Ubuntu, Android, and for those who remember, uh, we also announced uh, something called Migo, uh, which is GAM. And uh, the question is if the Android uh, and Ubuntu as well, available on Igloo and being done by Asterixon and uh, Mobile, is the same or is different uh, to the one coming from Linux. Um, today it is uh, still different, but there is activity so that very shortly it will be one single and it will be the same. Uh, let me explain, we have some minutes. Uh, when we started all the glue activity with Kalao and Mobile, um, we uh, were using the internal Android track uh, on our hardware reference board, uh, which is a product quality track that is in, in mass production with customers uh, today. So that was the, the natural choice to uh, work together with Mobile on the Android uh, release for Snowboard. In parallel, while we were re delivering the first releases, uh, Linaro started delivering the evaluation builds, and we are in Linaro, so yes, uh, you can find today an Android uh, gingerbread build uh, on Snowball with a full hardware acceleration uh, with graphics and multimedia, uh, which is based on uh, uh, an old kernel aligned to, uh, to, to Google uh, products with gingerbread. And on the other side, in Snowball, you find a Linux 3.0 kernel with the Android uh, gingerbread on top of 3.0, which is integrating all Linaro innovations. There are uh, ongoing uh, works and discussions every day. Uh, we have finalized this a few weeks ago. Uh, we will all be at the Linaro Connect next week, uh, working with Linaro every day of this, and then we'll have a workshop in the coming weeks again all together uh, to finalize the plan so that all the uh, hardware acceleration that is present on Igloo community is today already being integrated in the Linaro branch and as soon as in the Linaro branch we have all the full acceleration uh, then this is the same that uh, is used on, on that will be used on Igloo so it's a question of a uh, few weeks time now. And thank you for the question. It was very well, very well spot. Yes, please. Hi. Um, what about uh, the uh, upstream of Minaro, the trend uh, to be always on the more innovative uh, SOPs? And uh, the idea that if a new SOP more powerful comes, the, 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 the previous is not uh, well maintained. This idea. <laughs> um, well, in our sub-architecture, we are man still maintaining the 8815 or the U300, which go back both in time to 2007 as products. But and you think it's not, it's not true? You think it's not true? Is the, the Linaro can be a, a long-term uh, way to maintain also? Uh, Lina Linaro is helping all the SOC vendors to upstream as much as possible. Once you upstream your drivers, then they are maintained. If there is a regression and a, and a driver is broken, uh, you, you see it immediately. Uh, we, we see every, every day, a uh, few, few weeks ago, now I don't remember which driver specifically, but there was a patch set by, uh, by some community member, and they autonomously modified the code for the U300, not in STRX, but in the community. Uh, to comply with a new way of managing something. Now I apologize, I don't remember the detail. I can find it offline, but it, it's happening. So Linaro is not a, a point of discontinuity. Uh, Linaro is not a, a, a maintainer of the past. Linaro is uh, an acceleration of upstreaming and acceleration of, of uh, consolidation of, of the ARM architecture. 
And uh, I have mentioned in my slides that in the past uh, three months we have streamed the 1,000 patches within Linaro. Uh, similarly, uh, since we uh, joined Linaro, we measured over uh, the first quarter of uh, 2011 versus uh, last quarter of 2010, and we measured a plus 68% increase of uh, upstreaming of STRS on code thanks to uh, being in Linaro. Um, I guess uh, w what is uh, st still to be upstreamed today is, uh, is uh, the whole part related to multimedia. On the graphic side, ARM have upstreamed uh, the uh, driver for the Mali GPU. Uh, yes, the driver is available under the GPL. From the, uh, not upstream, sorry. You're right. But at least it's available under the GPL from the ARM website. Uh, on the multimedia side, we are delivering the drivers uh, in, under the GPL, uh, but these are not upstreamed. Uh, so this is something that needs to be to be done, uh, and we are working them. Um, what is left to be upstreamed is also the uh, power management um, and the device tree work. So exactly the the the, the, the key hot topics we are working on within Linaro. Also our, uh, our hardware man, H, uh, uh, H hardware man allocator which, which takes care of uh, the cache coherency and improving flashes and so on. Uh, that is uh, going to be uh, dropped and uh, we are going to use the UMM, the CMA, the DMA buffer, all, all the, the work that we are doing in Linaro. Actually we see that it's, it's very close to, to our hardware man. For the sorry, A the MP. What is the AMP? Ah, sorry. Uh, you mean the, the communication with other accelerators? Yes. Uh, the CPU is in SMP, so dual Cortex A9. Then uh, the accelerator are based on uh, DSPs, which do not run uh, Linux. Um, we have our framework to communicate with the DSPs. Uh, there is an initiative in uh, Linaro, in the Technical Steering Committee, where we are discussing about adopting one common uh, framework for AMP acceleration uh, through Linaro. So we are discussing about our own NMF. Uh, we are looking at TI Syslink, as TI is another member is proposing it. We are also looking at something like the uh, MCAPI, the, the, the MC API from the Multicore Association, uh, which is also available in several open source implementations. Um, again, the point is, uh, as for all frameworks, we need to find a common framework that is good for all and is not uh, linked to, uh, to one SOC only. Our own uh, current uh, multiprocessing framework, NMF, is so uh, tightly coupled with our DSPs. Actually, we use also an ADL, an Architecture Description Language, to uh, create some of the uh, infrastructure of our NMF uh, targeting the DSPs. And uh, this is uh, something that we cannot propose as a common standard for, for TI or Samsung or Freescale. So um, having a common AMP framework is something that we are looking at in but it, it must be good for all and it must not be a proprietary solution from one SOC vendor that is pushed to the others because then it will not be adopted. It must be something that is uh, common and then each one plugs their own hardware specific management below the frame. Yes, please. <laughs> I can speak for ourselves. Uh, we all need education. Uh, as Jean-Christophe told me 
few years ago when we started, he told me, you are so bad. <laughs> but we see that you are trying to improve. <laughs> so we need education. Uh, when you are uh, under pressure from the top management, uh, they just want to see the products out in mass production. Uh, uh, when, when I go to the top management asking to have uh, the data sheet available for download without NDA, uh, well, they tell me uh, why. Does it help with the smartphone being fast on the market? Uh, I think yes, but it's not easy to explain to, to the managers who are just looking at the million units sold. So it means that in, in, in the companies, uh, in, in, the, in the silicon vendors, uh, we are all under pressure in, in just doing things fast and sometimes these are a bit quick and dirty and uh, it's faster to duplicate and put the, the S4C call to read the touchscreen status directly in the touchscreen controller uh, but then the touchscreen controller <laughs> you have five, six, ten different for the same touchscreen controller just because you are using different I2C codes but it, it's faster so I think it's uh, it's uh, pressure and a lack of education and they are both things that you pay then later uh, because the code explodes uh, it is not maintained uh, so it may be faster the first time but then the second time you need to redo the same and then the third time while if the first time you spend enough time in upstreaming then the second time you have it available like now for the SMC uh, Ethernet controller the work was done a few years ago by Alessandro Rubini and by Robin Vincent in our team in Bangalore on the 8815. And now we have it on the snowball and it works uh, straight away. So now we're saving time. But in the first place it's hard to justify this, especially to, the, to, to your management. Um, I think uh, we would better go and have a coffee before the next session. Thank you very much to everybody.